2019. The David Pearson Longhorns haven't made it to the Super Regionals, um, but finished their regular season unranked um, with no title, Big 12 title or regular season title of any kind. Um, Texas also snaps its streak of consecutive Super Regional appearances at four years. So it could just be an aberration, but I think the fear for Texas baseball fans is going into the SEC where we know I mean, Texas uh, base, te- SEC baseball is the best in the country. There will likely be a champion um, that will be from the SEC. <laughs> um, and they got a bunch of powerhouse programs in the SEC. And I think a lot of the, I'm going to say paranoia, um, the anxiety about the, where the state of the program is for Texas baseball fans is the fact that the Aggies are right now as a as a Texas as a baseball program, um, they are one of the best in the country, and they are considered elite. And and, and I mean, the rival being elite in something obviously puts a lot more pressure on you if you are not performing at a certain standard. Yeah, and and that game was you know to go to extra innings with with the Aggies to get it all the way to the eighth inning, and then the Aggies get a run in the eighth to tie the game up, and then you go to extra innings. Uh, disappointing because for 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 baseball fans for Texas. You basically within 24 hours got the gut punch and then wiped out the next day. So you know that there was a it was a quick turnaround of playing that night game against AM and feeling like you had a really good shot to win that one and get one over on your rival, get a head up in the in the regional, and then it all kind of comes crumbling down there. You lose that game and then you know just can't put it together and have that uh you know a really bad inning. In the uh, Louisiana game, I believe it was a seven-run inning given up in that. Oh man, yeah, yeah, because they started out great, right? And they started out looked like they were going to rebound okay, and and you know keep it alive, beat Louisiana again because they played great against Louisiana on Friday. Uh, and then yeah, you thought they were going to bounce back, and then that it was it was a disappointing because it was two games in a row that you blew where you had the lead going into the later innings, and you just couldn't hold on to it, and disappointing. You were. Yeah, after Ace Whitehead's, but nearly seven innings. Yeah, Texas had allowed he allowed just two earned runs on seven hits, six strikeouts, and he had walked one batter. And you know he allowed only two runs still, but ended up taking the loss because after they put in Charlie Hurley, they allowed Hurley allowed six earned runs on five hits with two strikeouts in that disastrous eighth inning you're talking about. Yeah, so. And that was pretty much it. Texas was down 2-1 after the first seven innings. And then things kind of uh, spiraled out of control for Texas. And, yeah, I mean, that's been, that was actually the story. They actually ended up – they didn't get much run support. I mean, since that winner's bracket loss in extras uh, to AM and uh, on June 1st, they managed just four runs over 20 innings, um, the Longhorns did. So not a lot of run support as well. No, I mean, that was, you know, yeah, you, you felt like it. And that's, you know, I was texting with people on, on Mon- uh, Friday and you're like, where has this team been? This team that looks like they can, you know, this is a team that compete and, you know, they, they didn't show up in the Big 12 tournament. They've been playing better at the end of the season, but the game against Louisiana, you know, and it, it and remember, Louisiana, they were the lower seed. <laughs> you know, Texas was a three seed going into that regional. They weren't the two seed. Louisiana was. So, you know, you were in a tournament where they, they felt like they were disrespected being the three seed even though they didn't earn it because they just didn't have a great early season. Uh, then, you know, you, so you have that team show up and then the bats kind of disappear. I get A&M is a really good team. So, you know, you don't necessarily think that's going to be a blowout, but, you know, you, you that one you give up late. Three errors in that game, too. Yes, yeah, so you gave yeah. up. And that's the other part is you gave up the, that run. It's not an earned run even because the errors. Uh, there was two errors in the end of the game uh, for, the, for the Longhorns that allowed A&M to win. So it's just, you know, everything about it where – it just not getting it put together and to to basically to have that strong finish to the season for Texas and then get to the playoffs and go one and four in postseason play is is not what you want to see from I don't think that makes anybody happy to drop two straight games in the Big 12 tournament. You say, screw it, we're out of the Big 12, forget that. We're gonna move on to the regional and you get a big win and then drop two more immediately. You don't want to go one and four to finish your season. That's no, that's not gonna make anybody happy. Yeah. Uh, you're right about that, and Longhorn baseball fans are are not happy at all. And so I, don't, I'm not sure, but I will admit I'm not sure about where what they should do because you know 
Coach Pierce, I think he's, his win percentage is around, what, what 63%, 65%. And his teams pretty much have the same arc every year. They they start a little slow. They find their groove yeah. or find their identity, like right around the conference schedule, start a conference schedule, middle of conference schedule. And usually they make a run in the postseason, but you just pointed out the, the frustration would be that, no, they're one and four in the postseason. And the last few years, they haven't been able to build on the momentum that they have in the postseason. We've talked about this. It seems like every year Texas baseball is resetting under Coach yes. Pierce. Right under under Sark, they, you know this is what whole programs are supposed to be under Sark. You go look at it, um, look at you know Texas Vic Schaefer women's basketball. You know, hell, we just talked about a lot of the programs. I'm sure rowing's the same way. If you want to, if you actually can document it, there's there's a stacking of your seasons and on on top of one another. Where oh, you build from that postseason run, whatever it was. Like oh man, we made it to like Sark's like I'm obsessed with making it to national title because we made it to the semis. Yeah. So now national title is 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 what we're thinking about here. Um, and it seems like you build on the season before and then. The next season, you use that as a catapult to catapult you to another level. It feels like part of the frustration for Texas baseball fans is they reset every year. They have to reset again. That there's no, they don't build on the previous. And Texas baseball fans, let me know if I'm way off here. They don't build on the previous postseason. There's no, I mean, you're not going to win the national title every damn year. Even Texas baseball fans who are a blue blood program, they get that too. They're not yeah. unrealistic, but. I think they feel like they have to start off after they get the momentum in the postseason. It's like, oh man, this team made a run. Super originals. All right, next year. All right, this team, these are the things, the lessons they learned. Um, this was development from these certain players. They're going to develop into leaders. They're going to take the next step. And then they don't really do that. They almost have to reset and then overcome the same op- some of the same obstacles or new obstacles or um, the, the development seems stunted by certain players. It is strange that you don't get they, that momentum built from the previous season with Coach Pearson. Maybe it's because the coaching changes. Maybe that, you know, maybe it's because, you know, coaching changes, changing pitching coaches. That could be it too. A lot of, you know, the lack of continuity um, within the staff. It could be a number of different things. I don't know exactly what it is. I think that's part of the frustration, though, for Longhorn fans. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I think that's exactly because every year it feels like it feels like you get out of the postseason. And it's not, it feels like there's a little bit of excuses in, okay, you know, well, we, we, now we know what the problem is, so we're going to fix it. And not so much of it, what you say is building on it where you don't want to be saying there's a problem and we're going to fix it, which is, okay, we know we haven't addressed yet and we're going to fix what we haven't addressed, but we've, we've got this now covered every year. It feels like you have to re you know, you you're trying to find, you know, what your strength is and what your weakness is in, in, you know, David Pierce wants to be a pitching guy, but the the reality is the last couple of years, what's kept him in there is a long ball. And yeah. it doesn't feel like he's even trying to be a long ball team, but that's what the, they, they, they've done to keep him in these seasons the last few years. So to not ever really have what it feels like a plan and a, a brand of baseball that you want to play, that's what it feels like. It's really hard to get by for, for this Texas team and why it's, it's harder to believe that Pierce is the guy to turn it around because he does have a lot of redeeming qualities but it just doesn't seem like he has that intangible ability to get to that next level. Listen, I, I've said this before in my, with this, what I call the sports kind of the hall of fame sports rule of three. Yeah. Uh, if you will, it in, in nothing. I mean, like I said, Coach Pierce has won 65% of his games. Yeah. I mean, hell, all your Garrido's, I think his winning percentage was at, um, like at, you know, 65, 67%, but, when it mattered, winning national titles, right? And winning in the postseason. Um, but it, I think ultimately for Coach Pierce, he is a good coach, but the, the standard for Texas baseball is really high. And like I said, when you have Gus, Hall of Famer, then Augie Garrido, Hall of Famer, all time great, maybe the greatest of all time. Uh, and then you're trying to have a, a third Hall of Famer in a row. That's really tough in any sport any sports organization, any sports program to do that at any position uh, or, or with any um, a role with a team period, whether you're talking about coaches, players, quarterbacks, you know, whatever it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. Like you think about it, only the Pittsburgh Steelers have been able to really do it um, at head coach. 
um, you know, in in the NFL. That's one example. I think you gave another example of Kansas basketball. Yes, Kansas with basketball with Larry Brown, Bill That's Self, it. and now Roy uh and Roy yeah. Williams. Sorry, Roy Williams. Yeah. Larry Brown, yeah, Roy Bill Self. Great example. But you it, it's, it doesn't happen a lot. I'm, I, I threw this no. out there about Oklahoma and Brent Venables. Like when you go from Bob Stoops, and I don't know if even Lincoln Riley's going to be that anymore. Lincoln Riley hadn't learned how to coach defense yet. So we got to figure that out for him. Yeah. Uh, but, but it's just really hard to get three all time great Hall of Fames in a row. Just the odds are against you. So I'm not even. So Coach Pierce is, because he's obviously a good coach. Is he an all time great? Uh, is he going to be a Hall of Famer? I, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't, I don't right now. I don't know. I don't think so. But my point is it's hard to get three of those in a row. And I think that's why that's also working against Coach Pierce is that that's the standard for Texas baseball fans. Yeah. Hall of fame, hall of fame coach period. And they're like, well, he's not a hall of famer. Yeah. And I I think, I think you're right about (laughs) one of the biggest things you've said so far too, is, is, you know, what does A&M do? If A&M goes on and wins a national championship. Oh, then, then it's almost, it almost the writings on the wall on that one. Because yep. now your rival is your rivals ex- excelling and succeeding at a very high level, and you're not. Yep, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, no. If the Aggies win it all, then and I, I say one of the odds I saw had them as favorites, but they win it all. Yeah, you got. There's going to be some blowback from that. That just happens. I, I mean, ask Mac Brown when Oklahoma won it all in his in 2000. And I was there on campus when it happened, and you could feel it. It was palpable. Your your rivals just won a national title. They, it, it's on. The pressure is on. Your nine and ten and double nine wins and double digit wins are not enough. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm, hey, I got the number one recruiting class in the country, and Texas is winning nine games. Just had a Heisman Trophy winner. Uh, you know, by, on their way to winning eleven games, and it still wasn't enough. And and Longhorn fans let Mac know it too. Like, nah, man, it's not enough. Why? Because Oklahoma just won a national title. That's why. So I need you to you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta pick it up. <laughs> you gotta take it to the next level. And I think if AM wins at all, Coach Pierce is gonna feel that too. And the Texas baseball program is gonna feel it. And they should. That's I mean, Texas, that's that's that the standard of the brand. And I don't know if there's a higher standard for any program on the 40 acres. Than, well, no, I mean, but but we can has. say and and this is not necessarily for you know what the the school is gonna say, but I can tell you that Texas basketball has not done poorly the last couple of seasons. And there is a large contingent of fans who would love it if Rodney Terry was fired today. They would say that was what's better for the basketball program. I'm not one of those people, but I have, I've yeah. dealt with them enough on our text line when I was doing my show that, that, you know, there's a large contingent of people that don't like what he's doing. And he's one, you know, he went to the lead eight his first year. He went to, he won a, he won a game in the tournament his second year. And that's, that's not a normal thing. And that's, Texas basketball has not been the brand that Texas baseball has. Mm-hmm. And people still want that level to be, we, we, it's a national champion. We need to be a national championship level team. And if you look at Texas baseball last few years, even though they've been there, they, I don't think Texas baseball has been a national championship level team for several years. And it's not building that way. It's kind of, it's right at where it's at. And it's stayed pretty consistent. This is a down year for it, but it stayed around the level they've been at the last few years. Yeah. No, yeah, you're right about that. It's uh like I said, it you're right. I think everybody's expectation at Texas because of all honestly, you it you probably could do with all the other sports doing so well. Yeah. Like all the other sports are doing well. So you, whatever sport that you are invested in personally, the pressure now I think yeah. has increased. X Michigan, like, nah, man, I'm looking at Texas. Hell, I'm gonna say looking at rowing and it's it and softball, which it is. I mean, they're looking at all these other sports, you're looking yeah. at women's uh basketball and Texas football now and what they've done. And I think it's putting a lot more pressure on all the sports. And I think that's what CDC wants. He wants maybe say he wants all the programs in the top 10. That's like the that is the like the floor. That's yeah. the base expectation. Like everybody's it's a top everybody's a top 10 program. And you know. I think most of the programs are there. Uh, Texas baseball, obviously, right now is not. No, and, and CB just brought up a good point. Texas be doing well in football did help get Jimbo fired at A and M. You're so right, CB. You're right. Man, yeah, no, man. That I'm saying the right, whatever your right your rivals doing, it is. That's why, man. The Auburn's been going through hell in the Nick Saban <laughs> era. <laughs> You're like, damn it, man. Like it's just like, if they're going through. Oh, they, I mean, think they, about they, that. They, Auburn just throwing a parade, and then they heard Kalen DeBoer came in like, "Come on, yeah, exactly." Like, somebody, come on, man, someone let's put up. 
screw it up just once, please. Uh, no, but that's like I said, yeah, because you're I'm telling you, your your rival, whatever they do, it does have a direct effect on your program. All right, uh, good discussion.